from ABC, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Tonight we begin our report on the American agenda with a rhetorical question. Can one person really make a difference? The issue tonight is drugs. Specifically the fact that thousands of inner city kids are drawn into the drug business because, well, because it's a very easy way to make money. Tonight's report tends to emphasize one of the things we've noticed about many of the issues on the agenda. Quite often the solution to a problem is not a grand one. Here's Beth Nissen. Bye, hot dogs. People, come on! I'm proud of this, of this business because I don't have to be afraid. You know what I'm saying? The cops aren't after me. I don't owe anybody money. This is my own little business. Meet Howard Stubbs, high school senior, company president. He owns Howard's Hot Dogs. Every weekend, he works this corner in the South Bronx. Last year, he grossed $10,000. Don't sell things you don't believe in. Steve Mariotti is the man Howard credits for most of his success. Two years ago, this high school business teacher had an idea. Give inner city kids better job skills and build their self-esteem by helping them start their own companies. Mariotti quickly found that many were business naturals. It's got something to do with street smarts, that if these children can make it to the age of 17 and they're alive and they're not defeated mentally, they're, they're heroes and they have the mental strength to start a company. The bottoms come in small because they run pretty big, okay? And the top comes small, medium, and large. In Mariotti's program, okay. Josephine Renault devised a business plan for her lingerie company. She learned how to select her stock, display it, price it, how to keep the books and reinvest the profits. When I used to get my little allowance, I used to just spend it, but now I know, um, I know to use some money. For the year, so far, I made up 10,000. You're 19 years old. Right. What other kind of work would have been able to provide that kind of profit for you? What, what else could you have done to make Drugs. <laughs> Drugs. All right, listen. Me and God the bomb gon' show you how it sound. Leave those drugs alone, I'm gonna tell you now. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I got a little messed up, I messed up. Messing up is what 18-year-old Vincent Wilkins says he was doing two years ago, working for a drug dealer, hardly going to school. He was a sullen student in Mariotti's class, until Mariotti encouraged him to write and record rap songs. What would you have been now if it weren't for this program? So I would have been a big-time drug dealer right now. I was. For many who live in Vincent's neighborhood, the drug business is where the best job opportunities are, and the only entry-level jobs that pay more than fast food wages. You don't need special training. Vincent was paid for just standing on this corner. They tell you, hey man, you know, you want to make a little money? Just watch the corner, you get paid $200 like that. And that make you bug out how fast I made that money, you know? I can make more. You know, the drug industry has trained, I hate to say it, but a whole generation of inner city kids in the area of, of distribution and sales. You organized on your stuff? Yes. Okay. For Mariotti's students, this is the first step into legitimate business, a trip to a wholesaler's with $100 each to spend on merchandise. Mariotti used to pay out of his own pocket. He now gets some money from corporate sponsors who have invested in more than 50 little company presidents like Ray Taboo. All right, I bought these for 350 each, right? And then I'm going to sell them for 10. Mm -hmm. How long have you had this company of yours? Um, about five hours. Five hours. In my opinion, they see themselves uh, at the bottom of the hierarchy. Getting a kid his business cards, making him president of his own company, all of a sudden he comes out of that hierarchy. He's no longer on the bottom rung. Josephine says the program has given her a sense of purpose. Now I have a whole lot of plans. I want to open my shop. I want to go to college. Howard already has a four-year scholarship starting next year. And Vincent? He wants to be a star and inspire other young artists. These days, he is trafficking only in dreams. Beth Nissen, ABC News, the South Bronx. What sort of a difference can one person make? In the past three years, those 50 businesses that Steve Mariotti has helped youngsters to start have earned more than $80,000. No, it's not as much money as drugs, perhaps, but at least they earn it the old-fashioned way.
Peter Jennings. We mark the first anniversary of the American agenda on this broadcast. We're going to revisit some people who were the focus of one of our very first reports. A teacher who wanted to help kids turn away from a world filled with drugs. And the kids themselves who had the guts to reach for a different dream. The idea was a fairly simple one. Help a youngster start a legitimate business as a way to resist the temptation of selling drugs. But would it work? Here's Beth Nissen. This was Howard Stubbs a year ago, a high school senior making $10,000 a year selling hot dogs on the weekends and dreaming of someday making it out of the South Bronx, someday owning his own restaurant. Chef, can I ask a question? Does it matter, does it matter what type of cheese you use? You this is Howard Stubbs today, a freshman at Johnson & Wales University, a four-star school for culinary arts. The university was so impressed by this young entrepreneur that it awarded him a generous scholarship. But for Howard, college was a step higher than he thought he could take. I felt kind of inferior. I was like, well, you know, I'm different. I thought that I couldn't handle it. Then he realized that mastering new concepts, establishing new territory, was what he'd done in running his own business. I finally said to myself, I said, hey, if I can do that, I can stay in this college and I can be the best. Howard, how are you doing? Steve Mariotti has worked hard to convince students like Howard that they have a place in the mainstream economy. Last year, his entrepreneurial program helped a dozen teenagers start their own businesses. This year, an expanded staff is advising 30 young business owners. The idea? Help kids resist entry-level jobs in the drug industry. You have to offer alternatives other than just minimum wage jobs. You have to give a child a vision, and entrepreneurship does that. The bottoms come in small because they run pretty big, okay? And the top comes small, medium, and large. This was Josephine Renault last November, working flea markets selling lingerie. A few months ago, she moved to Los Angeles and landed a job as a bank teller. How would you like your money? When Josephine entered Mariotti's program, she could not add or subtract. Running her own business taught her to balance the books. This is 20, 40, 60, 70. It gave me a lot of encouragement and a lot of experience. I think if it wasn't for Steve um, teaching me math, I wouldn't be a bank teller. Like many graduates of the entrepreneurship program, Josephine has let her business slip. Mariotti is not disappointed. Whether a kid builds up a Ford Motor Company or a major company, or even if he goes into business, doesn't matter to me, as long as it's had a positive effect on his, uh, on his thinking. I was doing the drug way, that's the wrong way of life, but when you're living in the ghetto, it's hard, you gotta fight. This is about where we left Vincent Wilkins a year ago. Vincent had been working in the drug business as a courier until Mariotti convinced him to work instead on recording his own rap songs. Uh, he stayed out of the drug industry now for two and a half years. Uh, you know, it's very easy to get addicted to that industry from a business point of view. He has not done that. To Mariotti, that counts as one tiny victory in the drug war, although he worries that Vincent sabotaged himself when he dropped out of high school last spring. Vincent now spends his days recording others in his cramped bedroom studio on equipment bought with a loan from Mariotti's program. He charges clients $40 an hour, a fraction of what he made on the streets. Your friends once were still involved with drugs. Mm -hmm. What do they think of your business and what you're doing now? They think I'm a fool, man. So far, Vincent has tuned them out. But even young children hear about street profits, and Mariotti wants them to learn his brand of economics first. Money. You gave him money. And what did he give you in return? Change. He is trying to recruit them before the drug dealers do. He has brought his program to grade school. A laundry man, very good. Is that an example of a business? Yes. And who, own, who would own that? Uh, Beautiful, I'm proud of you. Mariotti says anyone can learn to be an entrepreneur, and anyone can start a program like his. What it takes are large reserves of energy, an eagerness to extend credit, and a gift for nourishing all that has value. Beth Nissen, ABC News, The South Bronx, New York. Tomorrow, we'll see what has become of another people in our original American...